Welcome back, guys, to day four of reading the Bible in a year. Today we're in Genesis 6 and 7. And these two chapters of Scripture, man, there's a lot. You could probably talk about it for hours. So we're just going to hop right in and look at the main key point. In Genesis 6, it says, The people began to multiply on the earth, and daughters were born to them. The sons of God saw the beautiful women and took any they wanted as their wives. So, the sons of God. That's a confusing phrase, and it's used, it's used five times throughout Scripture. Now, every time it's used, it's in reference to angels. In Job 38.7, God is talking to Job about when he formed the earth. And here's what he says, starting at verse 6. What supports its foundations and who laid its cornerstone as the morning star sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? In Hebrew, it tells us the sons of God sang for glory. So the sons of God is in a reference to angels that God created. So God created angels, and some of them have rebelled. They've come down to earth, and now they're doing evil things like having sex with women and taking them as their wives. And then they produce these these basically mythical people. So in the next chapter, we talk about Noah. And there's 1,500 years between Adam and Noah. The world actually gets decently developed. As As we hear about, some are actually workers of bronze and iron. So during that time, there's these angels having sex with women, and then their offspring are incredible warriors. But I don't want us to get caught in the weeds of this conversation. Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 4 says this, Do not let them waste their time on endless discussions of meaningless myths and spiritual pedigrees. In other translations, it's, it talks about genealogies. So Paul's referring to, to this sort of stuff in the Bible, that while it's interesting and we should study it, it's not something that we should break fellowship over or change denominations over because you're actually going to miss the true purpose of the story. What God is demonstrating here through Moses, the author of Genesis, is the evilness that was happening in the world. And there's a lot of it, but God had a plan before we had a problem. His plan was to use one man and his family to build an ark. And I'm not going to get into the scientific debate on whether or not that could happen or if there was a flood. I think Andrews in Genesis does an incredible job at answering those questions. I'm a filmmaker that goes to Malawi. That's what God has spiritually gifted me to do is to make videos for his glory. I'm not a scientist, but... God has given people, scientists, the ability to study His Word scientifically. So if you're looking for that explanation, Answers in Genesis is a great tool. So what's God's plan? He's going to destroy the earth, to purge it of its evilness by using a flood. Build a large boat from cypress wood and waterproof it with tar inside and out, then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. The word tar in Hebrew is the same word that it talks about for atonement. So what God is telling Noah to do is he's going to cover the ark in atonement and not one drop of his wrath will come on him. Later on, God covers his people with atonement of Jesus and then not one drop of his wrath when we die will come on to us. The ark is a future picture of what will come, is that while the world is being purged, like it talks about in the book of Revelation, of evil, not one drop of wrath will come on God's people in hell because of the atonement of Jesus. That is the purpose of Noah's Ark. It is to demonstrate what Jesus is going to do for us through his blood and the atonement that he brings. I've studied so much about the Ark and the scientific ramifications of it and how we can prove that it actually happens, but I didn't want to talk about this in this video because I think that we miss the purpose of what the Ark is actually showing us. The Ark is a picture of Jesus to come, and when we, and when we read the story with that perspective in mind, that man, this is about Jesus coming to earth and saving us from our sins so we can have future atonement with God, not one drop of His wrath will come onto us. To me, it's a humbling reading of scripture that makes me fall deeper in love with Jesus. And that, at the end of the day, is the purpose of the Bible, to make us see God working in our lives 
and then applying it to our lives and changing our hearts so that we can fall deeper and deeper in love with Him. Thanks so much for watching. Tomorrow we continue in Genesis with our chronological read through the Bible. If you want to read with me, the link to this Bible plan is in the description of this video. I'm also going to link a video that talks a lot more in depth about the angels and men. It's it's a video by Southern Seminary where this guy that has his doctorate in theology that's way smarter than me goes into all of the verses. And it's just a neat video if you want more information on the beginning of chapter six. I hope to see you back tomorrow.